Yeah, so it was a good show uh, overall. I think this is my 11th Dell Tech World, I guess when it was called Dell Dell World. Sorry about the dog barking in the background. Um, but, uh, you know, it was one of the clearest Dell Tech Worlds that, that I've attended uh, in a while, right? Uh, first thing I do when I come to a show like this is I gauge the confidence of, of the senior management team. And whether it's uh, Michael Dell, uh, Chuck Witten, I mean, Jeff Clark, uh, they were confident, very confident in everything that, that they were saying. You know, if there's any company that knows how to weather a storm, it's, it's Dell, right? The ups and downs, the ability uh, to do that. And more times than not, on the other end of the funnel, uh, Dell you know, has, has done something to put themselves in the lead in, in a certain market segment. I would say the big takeaway for me, which I was, you know, not pleasantly surprised, but I, you know, I've been advocating for the hybrid multi-cloud for more than a decade and was doing it before it was cool. And it was good that I got that in, Dan. Um, but it was good to see that was really the headline uh, behind that. Right, putting in managed services to be able to uh, best take advantage of, of the cloud. Now, strategically, what the company is doing is using storage uh, as, its, as its core starting point, okay? And that makes sense, right? It's a position of strength. And, you know, if you can parlay storage into data and data into AI all and making money across the multi-cloud, I think you're. I think you're. I think you have a good good chance of of cranking in a in a ton of business. Uh, there was a lot of talk about Apex, right? Which is the overall as a service brand for pretty much everything as a service, even if it's workforce uh, solutions, you know, future of work, uh, cloud. Uh, there was also, as you would expect, as we've seen at every show, uh, AI uh, discussions and. Uh, Jensen was on video from NVIDIA with Jeff Clark uh, going through uh, a new project that they're working on to really enable uh, companies, like we said in the, in the prior piece in SAP, to work on uh, private data sets, right? Moving forward, I think Dell's biggest uh, challenge uh, will be to convince people why these operations, these AI operations are done best on the, on the, on the private cloud and, and on the edge. I think, you know, the edge is not going away anytime soon, but I think enterprises are trying to figure out, hey, where's the best place to put this training uh, and this inference? And, you know, who knows? Maybe it's training, uh, maybe it's training in one place and inferring in a different place. What I do know is, is industry still hasn't figured out federated learning uh, at the edge where essentially you could do everything between the edge and just spread out the inference uh, goodies uh, out there across everybody and make incremental changes. But uh, all in all, I thought it was a really solid uh, event. I think Dell likely scored some points and with its competitors' um, shows coming up uh, afterwards, its primary, more primary competitors, uh, it'll be interesting to see if this uh, influences uh, how their content is is packaged or not. I had one senior executive uh, uh, tell me I, I won't name, name name who that is. Says, "Yeah, we we created some problems for our competition uh, going into this," and I. Um, I saw that more, not just a bunch of, you know, axe wielding or, or axe shaking, but, uh, some, you know, I noticed it too, and that doesn't make it true, but I think it's just, again, I'm really looking forward to see, uh, what the next few shows, uh, have in store and hopefully it's all, it's multi-cloud. Hopefully it's multi-cloud fabrics because that is the future. Yeah, so Pat, I think you you kind of called it out. There was the kind of the overarching theme that is AI that's just finding its way into any and every conversation right now. 
And then there's the underpinnings, the picks, axes, shovels, and everything else that's going to be required to actually deploy this. You know, we'll talk about NVIDIA later, but the big boom right now is all about, you know, an arms race to it, it, it deploying the volumes of our of infrastructure that are going to be required to train all these models and to deploy enterprise AI, whether that's probably starting with a lot of hyperscalers doing it as a service. And then of course, enterprises, larger ones are going to have to determine a way to do it on their own prem. And of, of course, data, privacy, security, governance, these are going to be huge topics. Yeah. So companies like Dell have a big opportunity to play in that sort of plumbing and that picks and axes uh, part of, of the universe. And, and obviously Dell has kind of this big demarcation right now because you've got the, the devices part of Dell, which is huge. And it's a little bit in a, you know, you could say that it's not Dell that's in a rut, but the whole device ecosystem is a bit of in a rut. You know, we had that huge buying driven by the 2020 and 2021 work from home events. And now you have a sort of shift away and everything's more infrastructure focused. And so Dell has a ton of potential there. I mean, you know, a just, you know, continuing in their leadership of storage servers, all the things that the company has to sell to enterprises. And then, you know, they now have their, uh, uh, they have a richer set of Dell Apex, which is their as a service and on-prem as a service offering. That's moving forward. You know, of course, there's a lot of competition there. This is the multi-cloud universe. And what's happening is big hyperscale cloud is moving towards prem and the prem providers are moving towards the cloud and everyone's sort of meeting at a different um, destination. Now, Dell did $102 billion in revenue last year. <laughs> $102 billion. Uh, yet the market cap of the company is under 40. Yeah. Which is just a remarkable... Um, you know, gap in terms of value. And so that makes Dell one of the, you know, m one of the more undervalued assets in the marketplace, given its size, scope, scale, revenue. I mean, Pat, we talked to, you know, the head of services, Doug Schmidt, and I mean, 60,000, they have 60,000 strong just to provide global service to their right. customer base. It is a tremendously large organization. Um, you know, Pat, Project Helix is interesting. You know, it sounds to me like another sort of, uh, a move for these companies to sort of pre-configure, build an image out servers and devices that can be quickly deployed to be leveraged and utilized for generative AI applications. I expect that to be something that will be launched across the industry. But, you know, some of it was good. Some of it was interesting. And of course, um, you know, Jeff Clark's uh, demo with Gen AI um, was very funny. Uh, he was talking to Jen Felch, their CIO, but at the same time, he, <laughs> he did a really great demo when he was talking to Jen with a G, AI. Um, you know, my take, Pat, as a whole is Dell has a lot of the core uh, technologies and requirements to be a big player in this transition. They also have a lot of proving to do in this particular moment in time because the cloud providers are definitely trying to make it very lucrative. They're trying to make it very subscription driven, um, you know, and all of the kind of on-prem consumption services are still kind of light compared to what the public cloud providers are able to offer. But I think Dell made some good progress. And I think that the fact that multi-cloud will not just be multiple um, hyperscale clouds, but will be multiple clouds, edges, telco, yeah. uh, does create a compelling argument for the real architecture that most companies are trying to build against. And Dell does have a broad set of solutions to support those customers. So also just a quick note of appreciation to the leadership, you know, Michael, Jeff, you know. Um, made themselves available, didn't they? They really did, Pat. You know, they, you know, we spent a lot of time with Sam. You did a great interview with John Rose, the CTO. You know, there's just a lot of access. And, you know, I, I can never get over just how um, generous Michael Dell is with his yeah. time. And he does really value the uh, perspective of the analysts and he takes his time to make sure the analysts are given the information they need.